our regular schedules. Mirav Sevilla, thank, thank you for joining us. Uh, we're going to be with you, Gabi, in just a second. But first, I want to talk about another big story in the world, uh, of course, that has to do with the operation. A third London mass protest uh, was held in support of Gaza, uh, this time uh, also in the UK, of course. And this time, it was almost unprecedented numbers. Uh, and we'll, we'll get more information now from Jonathan Satchardati, our I-24 news correspondent there in London. Jonathan, correct me if I'm wrong, this might have been the largest pro-Gaza rally that London has seen in recent years. Yeah, it certainly did look big. Large numbers of people protesting and marching through the streets. Again, going for the BBC because they feel that the BBC is somehow biased against the Palestinian side on this debate, uh, which of course is, is seems ironic to those who watch it and think that the BBC is biased against Israel. Right. So we see these large crowds again in the streets, also in Hyde Park, where we saw the infamous Member of Parliament, George Galloway, who has spoken to that crowd in Hyde Park and also spoke earlier in the week saying that he believed that Bradford, the constituency he represents, should be an Israeli-free zone. He said that he didn't want Israelis there, he didn't want Israeli goods there, he didn't want Israeli academics in the university, he didn't even want Israeli tourists. And so in response to that, some Israelis this week uh, just in the last uh, couple of days, I think on Sunday, went to Bradford in order to show that they have every right to be in Bradford. They took their Israeli passports and they made sure that they introduced various different people they met in Bradford to the joys of Bamba, the Israeli snack food, and right. generally tried a light-hearted approach. But of course, they too were met with some protesters there who were angry about Israel's actions in Gaza. And who is behind uh, this process? Is it the same group uh, or groups, a coalition of groups that we've seen in the past or are now, you know, bringing over 150,000 people attending this march? Are we seeing new groups uh, join these coalitions? The groups who tend to join in these protests tend to be the same people. So they come from the extreme left. You find the Socialist Workers Party there. They also tend to include various different Muslim groups and some Islamist groups, in fact. And we see them gathering pace and getting more and more support. Of course, part of the problem is that many people are judging the military offensive in Gaza purely in terms of what they're seeing on the British television and in the British newspapers, which is a rather skewed version of what's actually going on. There is an undue emphasis, some would argue, on images of civilian casualties at the expense of any detailed coverage of what's actually going on during the war. And we've seen over recent days journalists from around the world explaining that they didn't feel they could actually report on the Hamas side of things. Right. They couldn't show Hamas fighters, they couldn't show rocket launchers, they couldn't show human shields being used while they were based in Gaza. Now those sorts of things are coming out. And even this week we've seen the BBC itself, which many have accused of anti-Israel bias, uh, admitting that in fact the statistics it's been relying on heavily of casualty numbers might in fact not be telling the whole story because they are of course issued out of Gaza and are under the control of Hamas and the Gaza health authorities. So the BBC has started doing uh, a low level of analysis on those statistics that others have been doing for weeks, right. showing that in fact rather than indiscriminate killings, according to the BBC, there is a possibility that the data is starting to show a higher number of men of combatant age that were killed in the strikes on Gaza, rather than, as they had been reporting, indiscriminate killing or at least accidental killing of a very high percentage of children and women uh, in those casualty figures. And when we look at uh, the protests uh, over the weekend in London, uh, as you said, maybe unprecedented in terms of numbers, this happens uh, simultaneously with other uh, incidents uh, throughout the country. We spoke last week about the Tricycle Theater, uh, where there was a counter-protest uh, by uh, Jewish groups and Israeli groups, and also uh, Israel Free Zone, which perhaps is another uh, quote-unquote watershed in the deteriorating uh, relations uh, between uh, Jews and uh, the UK and Israel and the UK, depending on how you look on it. Well, the Tricycle Cinema decided not to allow the UK Jewish Film Festival right. to be hosted there once, as it was for the last eight years, unless they cut themselves off from funding from the Israeli embassy. And now the Bristol-based Encounters Film Festival has told the Israeli film director Yoav Hornung that despite selecting his film Deserted for the festival, they would also not accept funding from the Israeli embassy, which had been promised in order to cover the cost of his trip to the festival, instead saying they preferred to cover that cost themselves. But that trend here is of demanding that Israelis and British Jews must somehow cut themselves off publicly from the state of Israel or risk being ostracized. And that's a dangerous position to take, some argue, effectively telling Jews 
what their relationship uh, should be with the state of Israel, how they're allowed to relate to the state of Israel. And the tricycle's decision has been fairly badly received by much of the press here. Even newspapers like The Independent, which is fiercely anti-Israel, has carried some opinion pieces disagreeing with the decision. And yesterday, Sunday Times also had a long piece to that effect. So there is a mix of opinion going around, especially regarding the boycotting side of the anti-Israel mm -hmm. sentiment that is here. And when uh, the member of parliament, George Galloway, says, I'm um, quoting him, we don't even want Israeli tourists to come to Bradford. Uh, this is after he also lists, you know, Israeli academics, Israeli goods, Israeli services. Uh, is this also uh, something of surprise to British Jews? Or can we say, you know, this is George Galloway, he's more of the same of what he's been saying in the past few years? Well, George Galloway is well known for those sorts of comments and being a fairly inflammatory and divisive figure. That's how he's acted in the last few years of his political career. In fact, George Galloway, many will remember from his videos on YouTube of his uh, infamous meeting with Saddam Hussein in which he saluted him for his indefatigability. Right. So George Galloway is known to be a rather fringe figure in that respect. But these p figures are nonetheless important because they do articulate the feelings of certain parts of society. And were they not somewhat uh, popular with certain segments of society, they wouldn't get voted into power. And Bradford has a high percentage of Muslim voters who did elect George Galloway uh, into his position. And when he won, of course, he said that it was the Bradford Spring, uh, making parallels to the Arab Spring. So he's somebody that is a fringe figure, but not somebody that can be ignored by any means. Jonathan, I want to bring into this, uh, this uh, uh, segment Iftar Kouriel, the spokesperson of the Israeli Embassy in London. Mr. Kouriel, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Good morning. So uh, we're going to start with uh, the Tricycle Theatre, because that, of course, is something that has been ongoing uh, since in the past uh, week. The Israeli Embassy traditionally gives uh, this uh, Jewish film festival money every year. This time, what was your reaction when you heard that the Tricycle Theatre is going to be rejecting it because of uh, the Israeli Embassy money? Well, of course, we were very disappointed, and uh, we, we issued a statement hoping that the Tricycle would reconsider. You know, as somebody wrote here over the weekend, you know, racism is demanding something from others that you wouldn't demand from your friend. Right. And the Tricycle, in fact, had not demanded from any other festival, uh, including the Indian Festival last week and other Middle Eastern festivals last year, um, a similar, you know, um, a similar request. It also, it turned out, demanded that uh, the Jewish Film Festival show the movies in advance to the director of the theater to have them, you know, reviewed. That definitely is very worrying, and I agree with... Uh, with Jonathan Sacerdoti that uh, the receipt in the press of, of this decision was, was a good one in the sense that uh, there was a sense of outrage here um, at this decision, and I hope it will be changed. Are there diplomatic efforts uh, to change this decision? Also, of course, it's going to serve Israel's interests, but also it's, a, you know, a writing a wrong that has been done. Well, we're not in touch, obviously, with, with uh, the theater. At the end of the day, this is an issue between the Jewish festival and, uh, and the theater. But we're, we're, of course, supporting these efforts and issuing our statements and talking to people as well, um, of course. And the Israel Free Zone, I mean, just by the title itself, it's uh, threatening uh, for any Israelis over on, on, in Israel right now, it's, it's knowing that in parts of England there are Israel Free Zones. Is, though, the fact that it's coming from a member of parliament, George Galloway, who, as Jonathan said correctly, has throughout the years been, you know, provocative and so forth, does it lessen the threat? Or uh, is the Israeli embassy in London uh, making all of its efforts to reverse this kind of uh, rhetoric? Well, I think, again, I think that these types of comments, even from fringe figures such as Galloway, are definitely worrying. They are out of place. They should not, you know, it should not be said. We can, uh, we can just remind you, remind you that last week or two weeks ago, it was uh, David Ward who said that were he a Palestinian in Gaza, he would fire rockets at Israel. We wrote a very tough letter to Deputy PM Clegg, and uh, Ward apologized. So we do try to minimize these sorts of um, these sorts of, of things. You know, if only for the reason that they are inflammatory. And they can cause other people to act. You know, if he would fire a rocket, then perhaps somebody else in, in the UK will decide to take action by himself, commit an anti-Semitic act or whatnot. So these things do have an effect and, uh, and should not happen. But are there uh, diplomatic efforts between the governments now? Because of, we're seeing, you know, a trend in anti-Semitism, trend in anti-Israeli, uh, anti-Zionism. Are there uh, concerted efforts between Israel and the UK diplomatically also to combat this? Or are we leaving it uh, to NGOs and, and civil society? 
No, look, we are in constant, constant contact with uh, with the UK government, mm -hmm. and overall, the UK government has been very understanding of what's been going on. I think that uh, you know we are in a different situation today. Uh, there is a larger understanding of the threat coming from the Middle East, whether jihadists that were fighting in uh, Syria and came back to Britain and you know planned to carry out terror attacks. So I think overall the government and part of the public as well uh, realize that Hamas and Al Qaeda and ISIS you know are the same sort of groups and and therefore the challenge that Israel is facing is, is a very unique one. Um, we just saw yesterday that ISIS had its headquarters in a children's hospital in Aleppo, much like Hamas has its headquarters, the chief mm -hmm. hospital in Gaza. You know, these, these comparisons are taking place as well here. And so there is, there is understanding. And of course, we are, we are in touch, you know, all the time. Iftah Kouria, the spokesperson of the Israeli embassy in London. Thank you uh, for joining us this morning. And Jonathan, uh, thank you as well. Gabi, we're with you with some more headlines from the web now. Yes. Uh, other headlines from around the world, also with regards to the conflict, but also not. Yes, we're starting off with the Times of Israel. Guess who's